Hello and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively, to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. Hi everyone, this is Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this episode of the podcast. You may be wondering why I'm standing on the middle of a busy, well not quite the middle, but on the edge of a busy street. The reason for that is I wanted to focus our attention today on people who are not teachers. This is a busy road, um, as you can probably hear and see, uh, quite near where I live in Queensland in Australia. Travelling up this road are probably people coming home from work at this time of day who've been busy in their business or in their place of employment. People who have very practical needs for certain types of education, certain aspects of what they learned at school and a whole lot of other skills and knowledge that they've learned um, elsewhere along the way. And so that's the context of today's discussion. Now, if you're like me, you've probably been accused or had comments made to you at various times that your head is in the clouds and you work in an ivory tower and you're, you're not practical minded enough. And I've certainly had relatives and friends and various people criticize teachers as a group, as a profession for not having their feet on the ground and just having too many theories in their heads and not really knowing what the real world is like. Now, in our defense, teaching is necessarily an academic career and we need an academic preparation for that. And so we've all been to university and we have studied a lot of theory. We've studied child development and curriculum development. We've studied philosophy, sociology, psychology, and many, many other subjects besides. And that is right and proper and it's a very uh, necessary and an important part of the preparation of every teacher. But if your focus is on the theoretical side, if you are, if you like, inward looking, if a teacher was like that, I don't think any teachers are, are really that way, but if you were, you wouldn't be much use to your students or to their families or people who would interact with them, you know, when they're older. And so I think we need to consider there are very lofty goals for education. There are philosophical and political and societal goals for education. But there are also very practical ones. And the people that are passing me now in these cars and buses and trucks have very practical needs in their life as regards their education. They need to be able to read and write and do math and understand certain subjects and have a certain amount of knowledge and skill. And so their perspective on what we do in the classroom, as I said before, may be quite different from ours. So that's going to be the context for the discussion that I'm going to lead today on the teaching of number facts. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a quieter location. So I'm about to leave here and go somewhere quieter uh, to talk to you. And I hope you'll stick around for the end of the podcast because today I've got a special offer that you may be interested in of a resource that may be uh, of great benefit to you in your classroom. So now we're back in the classroom and uh, we can talk more calmly. So I want to continue to talk about number facts and just as one aspect of the teaching of math and the practical purposes that that is put to by our students when they finish school or even before they finish school. I'm not going to go into a great theoretical uh, discussion about how we teach number facts and so on. I will save that for another day. But just to talk about practical context, um, I'm going a little bit faster this time in this podcast. I've had some feedback that uh, shorter is better. So thank you, Amanda, for that comment. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. So this podcast will be quite a bit shorter. So three contexts. First one is home. And you know as an adult that there is a lot of use of math that you can um, 
put into practice in daily activities. If you're cooking, you have to get the quantities right. If you're doing DIY, you have to get the measurements right. If you're watching sport, a lot of sport involves statistics and numbers and how many points they need to win and all those sort of things and record breaking and averages and so on. And that can, you know, enhance the enjoyment of watching one's favorite sport and doing craft is another context. Secondly, is in the area of employment. I've got an example here which I can't refer to in a minute. Many occupations nowadays, if you want, wish to join them, you have to pass a numeracy test. So in Queensland this year, for the first time, uh, aspiring teachers who finished their course at university will have to pass a numeracy test and a literacy and a science test if they wish to teach um, up to year seven. And it's the first time, um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but uh, many of my students are in that situation of having to pass that test this year. Nurses have to pass a numeracy test, and I think um, most of us have been to hospital for one reason or another, and we would want to be assured that our nurses knew what they were doing when they were giving us injections and pills and so on, and that they'd done their calculations correctly. And just in general employment um, processes nowadays, there are lots of um, big companies that are using psychometric tests, as they're called, and um, often they appear to include numeracy tests for their employees. If you're going to work with finances or just just in terms of uh, you know knowing a person's general fit for employment, numeracy is important. I printed out an example of a sample numeracy test. This is for nurses from TAFE, New South Wales. Uh, total possible marks is 40. And then the next comment on the front page is calculators must not be used. So straight away you can see these testers on behalf of hospitals and health department employers are saying we want to know if these people can do the math without a calculator. So the first few questions are to do with powers of 10 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 1000. Um, we've got reduce a fraction to common terms and so on. Second page has some just standard calculation questions. Add together four numbers, including some with decimal places. Subtract two numbers, both with decimals. Um, multiply 37.2 by 5. So you can see the nurses, the students who want to be nurses, who want to pass this test, are going to have to know their number facts. You know, so there's a, uh, the second uh, context. And thirdly is business. Uh, many people nowadays are starting businesses. They're not necessarily going into employment. My own son, who's 22, uh, left school, didn't go to university, um, experienced a number of different jobs in different areas, um, but now is in business for himself, um, operating a business out of his office. He used to be out of his bedroom, but he's graduated up. And so he's a solopreneur, and he's selling products, and he's attracting customers, and he's dealing with all the ins and outs of running a business all on his own without a university education. And of course he's having to use a huge amount of math and number facts will be a part of that. So it's my view, just to sum it up briefly, that number fact memorization is absolutely essential for adults and therefore it's essential for the students that we teach in school. And so no matter how we do it and how we fit it into the context and how we match it to the curriculum that is used in our particular place of uh, teaching, I think number facts have to be an essential part of that. And to teach it well, you need a system and you need to have it organized and have a way to you know, fit it into a very, very busy, uh, crowded curriculum. And so we have a resource for you today which I'd like you to uh, have a look at if you're interested called 10 minutes a day times tables worksheets and so I encourage you to have a have a look at that so I hope this is uh, this podcast has been useful and I look forward to talking to you next time thank you for joining me on the classroom professor math podcast you can email me via peter at classroomprofessor.com or follow me on twitter with the username peter underscore price 
You can also visit our website at www.classroomprofessor.com to download free resources including the ebook 10 Minutes a Day Times Tables Worksheets. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please go and rate this show on iTunes. I look forward to speaking with you next time. And until then, goodbye.